tilted away looking turbo. Yeah, well, you were playing yeah. a game over there. It's so. true. Yes, I was. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Hello. a wonderful Friday stream. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. It is. I'm definitely not tired. Same. <laughs> and we were up until, what, midnight with our game last night? Uh, yeah. Yeah, midnight. Okay. But uh, yeah. things are things are changing as far as, like, my real life work schedule goes so i'm gonna be able to hopefully maybe for the better we'll see uh it could be could be awful could uh, be awful so could be terrible but uh welcome everybody tonight we have more painting for you um scott i want you to share a story i want you to tell everybody what what happened to you this past week uh that involves painting um mm, well i uh um mm, uh, mm. She, yeah. She's definitely not tired either, so we're all not tired together. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely not. I was painting for my other game, mm -hmm. trying to get a bunch of terrain-esque stuff done. And you got a shitload done. I did. I, I did get, there, like, I did get so a ton of it done. done sure. uh, and then we had our game, mm -hmm. and I got to use some of it, which was fun. Yep. And then I went to bed, and I woke up, and I went, huh, my elbow kind of hurts. And... Over the course of the day, uh, it swole up to about, you know, I don't know, like maybe like an inch bigger than it should be. It was all puffy and red and uh, super warm. And come to find out, it's, uh, I broke it. <laughs> Not really broke it, but yeah. like I borked it you, from, yeah. from uh, spending a bunch of time like using it as support while I was painting. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you went to the, you went you actually went to the doctor and they're like the doctor, they're yeah. like hey this this might be infected and yeah, everything yeah and, yep. here take some stuff and uh, hopefully we don't have to cut it open I was like oh no yeah but but, uh, but now all good now now you've got fresh new pads yeah, it, it still kind of hurts it still kind of hurts and I still can't put a lot of weight on it or anything but at least I can like I like move my arm just fine I'm glad that you are able to paint tonight yeah. I was not looking forward to painting if I, if, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I should have been like oh it hurts, so, it hurts so bad oh my gosh am I closer now I was they, that Casey said I was far away from the mic there that's equidistant between us yep so maybe I'm just super loud. Do I need to be louder? I Do know. I need to be louder? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, note to self: uh, don't don't lean on my elbow for. Let's see. It was like three three or four consecutive days of like six hours of painting every day yep. at night before bed, or at least take frequent breaks so to like, like flex your yeah elbow or it's like twenty four hours of leaning on it <laughs> hurt it really bad. Yeah. yeah, and I also bought these like like three inch thick padding. Squishy padding things for my armchair. I'm, I'm probably gonna buy a pair of these. They're myself. nice, huh? Yeah, because yeah. my here, Corey, reach down here and yes. it squish. Mm. No one can see what's Nobody happening. Can see what's going on. <laughs> this is the this is the weird stream. This is, this is totally not strange. Um, but yeah, I mean my my padding on my chair is atrocious as well. So yeah. it'd be nice to have a. I think most of, most of them are. Yeah, I think kind of feel like that. Yeah. I'm glad to be back. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, I think uh, last week was Preston, and the couple weeks before that we weren't streaming, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, we just had stuff come up, as usual. Summertime summertime, and wintertime get really busy, right? Spring and fall are kind of, everything's kind of slowing down a little bit, and then you hit, you, then you hit summer and uh, winter, and everything just goes ballistic. Yeah. Birthdays. Birthdays and holidays, holidays. And Father's Day and Mother's Day, uh -huh. and, on and, on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott, what the hell are you painting? Yeah, puppy has been taking up time too. Yeah, that's for sure. Puppy time. He is uh, adorable. He is adorable. He is adorable. Yep, he's a handful. Uh, this is Philly, Killy, Gloim, and Loim, and Frodo and Grodo and <laughs> Sam and Blam and. Blam. <laughs> yes, my favorite hobbit, Blam. Blam. <laughs> he carries his <laughs> shotgun everywhere. <laughs> uh, he's just a goblin dressing up as a hoblet. Yeah. Hoblet. hoblet. Yeah, he's a hoblet. Hoblet would be a great, like... Goblet. No, no like, uh, like uh, copyright-free name for halflings and hobbits. Oh, yeah. Hoblet. Okay. Yep. Come on. Focus. Hoblet. Piece of crap. Like a flechette. Uh, but a hoblet. But these are the things that Preston got as yes. a victor, mm -hmm. right? Yep. These are the two dwarf uh, statues that he can summon. Mm -hmm. Their names are Midi and Ode. Which one's Midi? Midi is the uh, female. This one? Yes. 
and then uh, Ode is the Definitely. full male dwarf. And they are both... Full male dwarf. Full, full metal full dwarf. Full metal dwarf. A kiss. Um, so, and they're both just pure gold. Yeah. So we're just painting those really quick because they look, uh, they look like they just need to be painted. Well, and we used them last night, and... Spoilers. Uh, well, sorry, Preston used them last night, and yep. I, I grabbed the figures, and I was like, why haven't I done this? <laughs> like, duh. It didn't take two seconds. Close. Far. Close. Focused. Not focused. There we, there we go. go. Stupid. And now I'll switch it back to the other camera. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. We'll we'll leave it on the paint cam. Yeah, so I'm painting them a cool cool gold, and it's got. So I used this uh, I used this primer, and it was kind of an old can of primer, I think. Mm -hmm. The white, and so everything I paint now has like a grit to it. And so I've been I've switched I've since switched over to using my airbrush. But yeah, but the, the a lot of these have this stupid grit to them, and uh, the grit works really well. For these gold figures, or like for these statues, but they don't work well for other figures that I want to paint because yeah. I don't want them to be gritty looking. Exactly. I don't want them to make it look like they're made out of sand unless I really want them to be made out of sand. Mm -hmm. Need to set up a camera just to sit the figures on, so it can autofocus easier. Yeah, we would. We need to kind of figure out like a way that we can, like something that will allow us to autofocus it. It's just one of those. A third camera. A third camera. Mm -hmm. No, no one uses more than two cameras in anything. Yes, that's true. Yes. We we definitely don't. We definitely do not. <laughs> well, that's actually a good idea for when, for when um, we upgrade. Yep, and get better cameras because then I'll have all those webcams that I have nothing to do with. Yeah, and then I we'll can have, set one up. We'll have plenty of cameras that we can. We can do like a really like close up cam right here with just a stage or something that uh, you set them on and then everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a pretty busy week. Pretty busy. Pretty busy. Uh, we got back to playing the regular game on Thursday. Uh, Sans Tori this week because she is she is busy uh, being a living her theater life. Yep, being a movie star or a theater star. Yeah. Um. And I'm, I was very happy to get back into an area, actually. I was a little worried that I wouldn't, like, flow back into it as well as I did, but I thought the episode last night was I thought quite it was great. enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then we got to get to, we got to, get to things that uh, we kind of left off as a, oh, crap, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Um, spoilers for the last which, episode. Yeah, right? which is going to be a couple weeks until... Uh, this that one comes out because next week we're doing an off week and then the week after that we've got that episode on Wednesday. Yeah. It's given or, us given us a little time to uh, update and, yeah. or uh, catch up and then get everything edited and stuff. Yep. Or Monday, if you're a patron, True. that was uh, that was something that we we had been debating on for a little bit now, is starting the Patreon, and it kind of. We were kind of being like, okay, once we hit like, f you know, 5,000 subscribers, we'll probably pull the trigger on it. And then we had we had a, a day that we were supposed to do um, extra games on a Saturday to build up a buffer. And uh, nobody could make it except for Dallin. And Dallin said, well, why don't we do this extra bonus content yeah. then? Yeah. And we went, great, because we've been wanting to get some put together for the Patreon and now that we have bonus content, we can put it up on there. And it was like, okay, well, let's just get this done then. So. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun. And I, yeah. I was happy because I got to use my theater room as a theater for the yeah. first time in <laughs> ages. A year and a half? Yeah. I'm trying to remember the last movie we watched down there. It was, it was, well, it was, I wouldn't say pre-pandemic. It was no. right after the pandemic was kind of not done because mm -hmm. it's not ever fully done, right? Yeah, but. I remember we watched Black Widow we we on set Disney, it up on Disney, on Disney Plus, Plus yeah. uh, through there, and then we watched we watched a lot of Star Trek while we were painting uh, to get ready for an area itself, you know, like and uh, the the gauntlet that came before it for Colby's channel. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that we watched in there, but we never really like converted it back to a theater very often. Yeah, and when we did, it was like. It's a big hassle. It is a giant pain. It, yeah, it is a giant pain in the butt. Um, and that's 
that's like nobody's fault. It's just the fact, like it's just how the setup goes, right? Yeah, uh, we wanted to do the filming, and the only way we could do it was the way we did by hanging the rig up temporarily and mm -hmm. get everything attached to it. Um, and I kind of made it sort of so you could put it out of the way, but it still was in the way. And yeah, I've got I've got other plans for future. You know, I'm the uh, in the next probably like four or five months. I want to rebuild everything yeah. so that we have. Uh, a whole bunch of new uh, ways to like hang everything up and then like get them out of the way if needed. Mm -hmm. So we got a couple extra viewers. Yeah. Hello, if you're lurking. Yes, hello, lurkers. It's okay if you're just you just want to lurk and listen, but uh, feel free to say hi and uh, chat and ask questions. Um, how pale do you look in that camera? I'm all, I'm pale all the time. Yeah, I think it's that light mm -hmm. too is kind of causing a a little bit of a glare just because. I'm I'm just it's a pale because I am a pale boy. Nobody loves me. <laughs> In some lights, you look like uh, a ginger. Yeah. Yeah, and that I mean, again, that's not a not a bad thing. No, that's not a bad thing. That's not dissy you. Um, but it's just like every now and then I look over and I'm like, oh, you look like you have red hair. I don't tan. I yeah. burn. I get I get all lobstery. Yeah. Yeah, that, unfortunately, our lighting situation here is pretty much what we have, you know. <laughs> yeah, all of it is, all of it is a you know slow upgrade, and part of that is why I like having the Patreon stuff because yeah. so mm -hmm. we can we can start a, a a more consistent and reliable source of uh, income for the channel. Yep, and yeah, I'm 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 really hoping that it takes off. I am too. Because I'd love to have a bit more... Bosco! Uh, hey, Bosco, welcome. Uh, I'd love to have a bit more uh, money to throw around for the channel. Yeah. I was... Uh, subscriptions to stuff and... Oh, man. I was looking at... Buying supplies and just stupid things. Like, occasionally we want to get together and, and like, talk about things and stuff. And it's like... Everyone can't do it except for during a specific time where it's dinner or something. And it's yeah. like, well... Okay, everyone bring a few bucks, you know. It'd yep. be nice to have the channel to occasionally... Exactly. Occasionally do that. And I do, like... And the more Patreon subscribers we get, the more we can basically show our uh, significant others, hey, this is actually making money, so we can put more effort into it, mm -hmm. which in turn probably, you know, builds the audience more. I'd love to do a little bit of advertising. That's one thing that we've never really done, mm -hmm. is, like, advertise. We have, I've never even posted our channel on... Like the D and D Reddit, not that Reddit is a thing anymore, right now. <laughs> I think Reddit's fine still. But. No, so uh, the problem is, so a lot of these communities went private for in protest, right? Yeah. Well, that means that all of their articles are private too. So whenever I look up something like, oh, give me some cool dungeon pu puzzles for D and D, and I click gone. on the Reddit page, it's oh, this community's private. You are can't. They, have they not come out of private private stuff? Uh, some have, some haven't. It's kind of a because it's an ongoing protest, right? It's a yeah. well that it's supposed to be like an indefinite thing until I hate things to say change. It, those ones will probably if they don't come out, people will just start new ones, and everyone will migrate to them. It's kind of how yeah. everything is on the internet, yeah. right? That is the unfortunate side effect. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was I was driving by. There, we have an abandoned like gas station, kind of nearby. Nearby, and mm. and I was driving by it, and I looked over, and I was like, "Wouldn't it be nice to turn studio. some building like that <laughs> into a studio yeah. where we could where we could just sit down and have everything set up, you know? And obviously, you'd put a security system on it, and whatnot, mm -hmm. for when you're not there. But yeah, it was one of those things where it was like it was like, oh, it would be so nice. I want to be independently wealthy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that's everybody's goal, but uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone wants it. Yeah. All right, there. They just need a they need a black wash once they're all completely dry. Yeah, but they're pretty cool looking now. Yep, and I mean that's golden statue. That's all they're supposed to be is just some you know golden statues that uh, fight and punch people. I think so. Some big old monks. Yeah, or some small monks. I guess. I was I was pretty proud of the poses, despite. Uh, Despite it being like mostly Hero Forge standard, yeah, they they do lack a lot in posing. I, I was making a bunch of uh, figures for something the other I, day, and it was like, there's so many that I want to do that I could think of a really cool pose, but even with the like customizing, like where the torso goes and arms or whatever, you know. Good morning, uh, morning. Bart. Good evening from America. Yeah, 
I forgot where we were for a moment uh, there. Specifically, uh, the Midwest. Yes. Yeehaw. Y'all. So what are we What are we uh, actually uh, painting tonight? I'm thinking this guy. Ooh. This is not one that I asked you to print. Nope. This is a uh, Scott uh, original, as it were. I'm I didn't, I didn't make it. it was, it's a cast and play that's true, uh, yeah. model. That's the, the maker of it. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, like uh, the cool thing is, he comes with some uh, some cool props to like put next to him. Ooh, a Stargate. Yeah, and it's it's got a bunch of pieces that that uh, they are supposed to attach, but they like broke off when I was when I was. Uh, printing it so what i'm doing is i'm gonna drill some holes in it and i've got some like super thin uh plastic clear rod oh yeah that i'm gonna use to like make them look like they're floating that's cool in space i mean you have to draw the stargate symbols on that right yeah i think i should yeah. yep i'll draw all the chevrons yep all the chevrons <laughs> <laughs> and i'll draw them like draw them in white and then like hit them with the airbrush blue and make them look like they're glowing yeah <laughs> see you say that and i'm like i could never make that work so you you talking about anytime you ever talk <laughs> about oh I wish I was good at or better at painting or something it's like you're really good at painting so I wish I could take more time at it that's the other thing is mm -hmm. like some of the really good models that I see online it's because they take 30 40 hours on them because that's their only thing they're working on for the week right yeah and I would love to be able to do that but I have so much stuff that I need to do to get prepped for all of our games that it's like I can't yeah <laughs> have to get this done you know <laughs> yeah it really is one of those just like constant goes and that's why that's why we uh we kind of dropped the the notion that everything was going to be painted all the time mm -hmm. because we were doing that for the longest time with an area where everything had paint yeah and if it wasn't painted during the recording it was painted After. afterwards mm -hmm. so that i could film it and then like, yeah do the rotations and, and yeah do we ever do rotations for the fan shot no, not yet. Oh, we'll have to we'll have to post that as like a quick video. Yeah, so that everybody can see. Which oh, the fan shot, so good. Yes. Oh my gosh, Tori did an amazing. Job. Yes, I I I could not be happier with how that turned out and how that final fight turned out specifically. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I feel bad about that how that final fight turned out, but I also loved it. Um, we're not gonna spoil it because it is only two days since it's been released. Even though but it's been, but a if you haven't crust. watched it yet, and maybe you were thinking, "Oh, I didn't really want to watch the fan shot," you should really go. Oh, yeah. check it out. It, it is so fun. It is good. It is a lot of fun. Uh, we get to play characters outside of our comfort zones in some cases. I know this character was definitely not the typical character that I play. Yeah. I felt I I got I caught myself feeling really bad a lot of times, <laughs> like yeah. in my head, and being like, "There were I quite need a few to... times where you you had to like pause the game and be like." This is not Corey speaking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't actually feel this way. Or, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, Wick is definitely not my uh, typical character cup of tea. Uh, Casey, I hope you got your steroids. Because all she said was "got my steroids," and then I haven't heard anything since. So. Oh yeah, yeah. your wife is uh, trying to get swole. Yes, <laughs> one of us needs to. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to carry this relationship. <laughs> physically yep good got him perfect but yeah the the fan shot was amazing and if you haven't checked it out if you're watching this video after the fact pause this video go watch the fan shot and here's a little hint 1.5 speed we sound so much better on 1.5 speed in well, my opinion that's because we don't like the way we sound on yes, camera very true. like most people i actually don't mind it as much anymore more yeah because I've been editing so much and listening to my voice outside of my head, yeah. it doesn't bother me as much. Agreed. Just like when I've been... Agreed, your voice doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. You had 36 years to get used to it. 30, yeah. 37, 37 now. Yeah, sorry. Mom, Mom told her friend that I was 38, and I had to correct her. And she's like, oh, sorry. And I was like, no, don't sorry me. Like, I'm 37. You should know this <laughs> yeah. as our parents. You're our mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, 1.5 speed. 1.5, yes. You don't mind how... I don't mind my voice anymore just because I've been editing, yeah. But it's like uh, any time that I listen to an audiobook where I'm like, I don't know if I like this narrator. Two chapters later, I'm not even noticing any of their, any of the weird inflections that uh, cause me pause. Unless they're terrible, 
and uh, they say Super Saiyan instead of Super Saiyan. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <sighs> it was wasn't that like a vampire book? Yes, that, that was, was. It was pretty fun though. The, the, yeah, like the not... the concept and everything was fun, but the the narrator did not get any sort of notes and had no sort of geek knowledge whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Call it Super Saiyan, and he had a couple others that he said that I was just like, I was like, are you kidding me? Unless like. It is Super Saiyan. <laughs> Someone, maybe the author wrote it C Y A N. Yeah, Super Saiyan. <laughs> We're going Super Saiyan. Well, because um, that's uh, when they go even higher than Super Saiyan is when they get the. the that's right. The they get the blue hair. hair. Damn, you Super Saiyan. You maybe know what? we were just wrong. Ah, <laughs> uh, the the Archmage Swolio was in sage and loyal ally. Yep. <laughs> Good old brawl. The uh, the he's a. Conjuration, I think. Conjuration wizard and alchemist. Or he's an illusionist and he's not actually buff. No, he because he he does the he does oh, the head hand can, magic. Head cannon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I wanted to make a wizard that was uh, that used like Bigsby's hand a lot. And, oh yeah. But yeah, earth and grasp and everything. Before the D and D movie came out, by the way. You should um, you should get a. Uh... Hero Forge figure of him done because Abroad. I I think that would be a fun one to do on stream mm -hmm. and just in general. I think what we would need to do is we get it without the base, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we we print off one of the Bigsby's hands that we have from another. Oh, like holding him? Yeah, basically like holding him. And I'll even make it so that his like. He, his arms are behind his back and his like cape is flowing out behind him and he's just doing that like straight stand <laughs> like he's flying but forward. just like <laughs> yeah just like <laughs> you know <laughs> okay i'll work on that yeah do it brawl brawl will become a uh an npc that joins the party for just send him over because i've been printing a whole bunch lately so yeah uh i'll just throw him on another thing with a bunch of things that you're not allowed to see Okay, like you, this. Uh, have you been printing box right here? Have you been printing any of the ones that I've been asking you to? No. Okay, it's no. all been you. <laughs> um, no, I can get back to that though. I kind of feel bad because I I wasn't. To be that. honest, we've got plenty for Arconis. Yeah, because you already printed everything for Arconis. Like, I want to say like uh, thirteen sessions ago, oh. you had everything printed. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. It's just so. Yeah, that's okay. my bad. Well, that's fair. What are we uh, up to right now that we're off the camera here? You were uh, off camera. Oh, so. I was... I found some... Sometimes there's these, like, little itty-bitty supports that get stuck between... Mm -hmm. You know, like this, like, right right here, between there or something. And so I have to go in there with a pair of... I got, like, these little micro-tweezers. Uh, yeah, I think Ode actually has one on his beard. Between I got his rid beard. of him. Oh, you got rid of yeah, the beard ones? Okay. Yeah, same kind of thing. Cleaned his beard. Yep, cleaned his beard for him. Just gave him a, a quick little uh, he's scraping. Not, he's not a real dwarf, so he has trouble with that. Right? That's true. Totals. Yep, because it is it is one giant piece of gold and, with just like... Uh, and let's be fair, Victor can't grow a beard, so... Canonically. Canonically. <laughs> I say completely randomly. Uh, hey, if he can make a surprise bolt, bolt kachu... Then oh, I'll, yes. say, I'll say he can't grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, that's one of our one of our new uh, emotes. emotes so it's so fun. Out. I love it. Um, I know that. Man, I, I wish I had. Again, this goes back to the. I wish I had a lot of money. Yeah. Because I'd love to get like a whole bunch of commissions done, of people's characters and whatnot. Because that's one of the things I like. I, I, I have not been on a Reddit blackout myself, yeah. so I've been scrolling through, and most of the pages have been on blackout, but the r slash art commission and r slash commissions haven't been, Good. so I've been seeing a lot of the commission what, um, artwork and stuff. What would you want to get? Like, Do you have any particulars that you think that uh, would be your first, first sets of commissions? Uh, it would be the original Wayward Watch. Yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. That would be month one. Would be the original Wayward Watch. Uh, fair. Yep. Because I have a plan for this. You know that I have a plan for this that I'm, I'm super excited I'm, about. I'm but, not asking for me. Yeah. I'm asking for for the for the chat. Like yeah. What are some? That's ones true. That That's you true. Would do? Yeah. 
But um, I know, and I'm teasing the fact that I have a plan. Oh. If uh, if we get more people on Patreon, we might be able to afford something <laughs> spicy. Not spicy. That's no. the wrong word for it. That's the wrong. That that's a Patreon level we don't have yet. <laughs> if you want the spicy uh, artwork, yep. Uh, that's... Of our characters, you're going to have to pay for it. Yep, or commission somebody else for it. <laughs> That's when you know you make it, by the way. Is when, when you makes mm-hmm, you. is when you end up on rule 34. Mm. Yeah. Not you personally, but, you right. know, the, the, character. the character. Yeah. Like all the critical role uh, Oh, yeah. Characters. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> don't go looking into that if you don't want to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, what are these websites and what are their names so I can make sure I avoid them? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it is a badass emote, Bosco. That's that's for sure. Yeah, he did the and he did a really good job at turning it into like a a good like basic style emote, yep. which I really liked. Yeah, spicy art Patreon tier. Yep, or spicy art potion tier. Ah, <laughs> it, we'll call it Einar's spice bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's her. She has a secret pseudonym that she writes all of all mm-hmm. of the. An area is erotica under. Uh, Ron I E. Is the is the pen name, which is just Einor spelled backwards Ron with some I. extra spaces yeah. and some periods. You know, like George R R, but uh, yeah. Ron I E. <laughs> Actually, the one Patreon tier that I would love to make one of these days would be a. Uh, it would be like a limited. Limited, like, one-month thing, um, and having, uh, having everyone, uh, that signs up for it, but it would be limited to, like, five, mm-hmm. and we would have a Patreon ran, or not, ran by one of us, but a Patreon game. Yeah. Like a Zoom, over Zoom, or Discord, or something like that. Yep. Like, like a two or three series thing over the course of, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks type of a deal. I'd probably make it a, a one shot, but the one shot would be like seven hours or something yeah. like that, you know. Like, like a Saturday yeah. Saturday at noon, yep. start there. Yep, and then, then have a break and... halfway through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Still looking at the pre roll ads, get that paper. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate uh, you looking at the ads for us. <laughs> Bolt as Fisto from Fallout New Vegas is part of the spicy tier. Google it if you're not familiar. If it's part of the spicy tier, I don't know if I should Google it, but it's Scott's computer. So, easy peasy. I feel like I should object to this, but, eh. <laughs> the spicy tier. Oh, it's a spice. Why is it spicy? Corey reads. I mean, he's a, he's a robot. Things. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a robot. I'm assuming that there is some spicy lore Probably, around him, but yeah. I don't I don't want to sit there and read through a Wikipedia page while we're on stream. Yeah, or type in R34 or whatever. Uh yeah. I mean, I could do that. That'd be fine. <laughs> I This is going to be I I'm going to regret this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's about what you expect. Yep. Oh yeah. Wait, hold on. We're we're former Mormons in Utah. Oh my God, Corey! <laughs> Look at it. Former Mormons. Oh, okay, yeah. And I might take all that back. Yep. <laughs> Everybody who uh, turns us up just had their uh, headphones blown out there. So. Sorry. Sorry, headphones u- users. I always laugh at that because I work with people that are. <laughs> that are 40 years old and are very much like Ooh, a booby <laughs> yeah you know and i'm like, like i'm looking at like the it's mo- the venus de milo what are you talking about i have about? i have friends that send me like some of the most depraved shit i've ever seen and i'm like <laughs> oh i did not know that I, something that looked like that could go into a, okay i have i have That's sent you i have sent you like monster tongues yeah. several times that just like somebody had like done art on it i'm just like these are cool you know yeah. and it's like anybody that would see that outside of a, our we'll you know like, heathen circle would be like oh my gosh, gosh. that's uh, yeah. that's that's depraved uh casey said by the way i'm trying to get whole not swole because <laughs> yeah she's on the, the steroids for a side issue yeah, exactly. Add, add rule 34. Mm-hmm. And and apparently the word bingo in well, there. Well, apparently, so I don't want to warn you. I don't want to scare you, Casey, but I took steroids when I was a, 
a child. And I went from a very skinny, in shape child to, well. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> that. That was not steroids. It was, actually. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. When I, when I it was... fell into uh, poison ivy and I blew up like a balloon. Uh huh. Yeah, I got put on like three weeks yeah, of steroids. Sure, but that w- that is not the main reason why you are no longer oh, a it, skinny it, fit it child. Help, though. <laughs> yeah, is that how you got so tall? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it makes you grow. Yep, miracle grow. Um, so I have miracle grow outside, but I don't recommend eating it. Oops, sorry, my bad. I will. Uh, I will be back. <laughs> I have to up. go. I have to go vomit. I will just go play the Sirenscape sound set that Tori downloaded that's got the puking and yes. burping and farting on it. <laughs> Thank you, Bosco, by the way. I uh, I had a lot of fun groaning to that uh, and he will forever, not enjoying it. He will forever hate you for that. Yes. <laughs> but I will forever love you for being an awesome person. So it balances out. Now, I've got a task. For everybody in chat and everybody who is Going to watch not in chat and watching this later, um, there is a new channel on our Discord. Mm-hmm. You don't know about this because I made it like 20 minutes ago. Oh. Uh, it is called... <laughs> I, I forgot the name. It is called... <laughs> it is called... Tier List Recommendations. Oh, okay. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for stuff that we can do on our first Saturday stream. That's not just painting. Uh, and I want to do D&D tier lists. So uh, there are uh, there are tier list creators out there. And they come with like a big like search engine where you can search for like a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, whether it's just a tier list of rank these as like S to F tier. Or they have specific names to it. I want you to send me your best in that channel. So uh, find your best, find your best or worst tier list, D and D related preferably, but it can be like anything fantasy related. That's fine, um, and they're gonna send us nothing but Brandon Sanderson book tier lists. <laughs> hey, I'm okay with I'm F, okay with F ranking. tier, I'm F tier. No, I'm okay with ranking them just based on like the the looks of their their titles and the looks of the covers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want I, and if you have one that you want to create. They're actually really easy to create. I've created a couple. Um, so, yeah, I want tier lists because I want to do that. And we've got, I've got that planned for like a Saturday stream, maybe. Sorry, you said first ever Saturday stream. Preston technically uh, not, did that. Not first ever, yeah. Our, you mean our, 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 our first uh, early stream. Early stream. Yeah, because it's going to be, it won't be 7 o'clock at night. It'll be uh, noon. noon here. So it'll be easier for people to attend. So mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll post an, uh, an announcement on the discord as well. Once the stream is over, but yeah, I want to know, I want your tier. I don't want your tier list. Anything. I fantasy? want your tears. I want your tears. As a DM. That is what I am fueled by. Yeah. Tears. Yep. T I E A R S. Yep. Yeah. No tears. Going back to the paint camp here. Uh, did you ever, so did you ever learn the whole, uh, Baby shampoo doesn't say no tears. It says no tears. No tears. Yeah. Yeah. And and the baby shampoo developers just never corrected anybody never on it doing, because it helped them sell it. But yeah. it's kind of funny now that I know that that I know that it's meant for not not damaging the hair basically, uh-huh. which well, duh, it's, shampoo. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. But I always thought it was tearless, and I've literally gotten it in my eye before and been like, oh god. You know, yeah. Especially when I was I was bathing Shep one time and he did a shake <laughs> and I went, ah, <laughs> kind of both eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was not fun. Uh, don't know when the Saturday stream is going to be, Casey. That is a, that is a um, on the plans. But yep, it, not, it's not it's sort of a stone. nebulous like out there. I'm just putting this out there and I'm gonna basically every chance I get I'm gonna remind people. On, on our streams to be like, hey, go go recommend some tier lists. You've got time still, you know. Maybe I will. I would say the first week of July, but that's July going to be July fourth. So, what about like the second week of July? The second week of July could work. That'd be good. Yeah. No hard commitment on that, but uh, what psycho would tear a baby? <laughs> uh, it's um. No, I can't. I can't think of any good. Whoever took the Lindbergh baby. The parents? Isn't that know. what that was? I don't know. 
I showed know. you I showed you that TikTok I have no where idea what that story is even about. So. Uh, it's just a baby that went missing, and the parents claimed that somebody stole him, but then like that story started falling apart, and nobody knew what really happened to it. But it went missing. I don't even think it was ever there's recovered. Been a couple, there's been a couple of those similar stories in the news lately, where it's like uh, that the one lady in Florida. Uh, said her children got murdered or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kind of find out, like, she's done it, basically, but isn't in jail. And she even did, like, a... Like, a kid whole documentary did about it or whatever. Yeah. And and a she tr- basically talked about how she would have done it if it was, you know, and it's like... Yeah. You're <laughs> confessing. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those... Uh, it's one of those kind of jitty things. I don't like to think about <laughs> too much is... Uh, parents being assholes to kids to their kids even in just like a minor capacity but i mean this is the ultimate assholery uh, as far as that goes because it's like if you don't want kids don't have don't have kids yeah like there's plenty of other people who would love to have kids out there that don't like it's yeah might still have puppy classes well we might i'm i'm of the opinion though that there are some people that probably shouldn't ever have kids yeah that's true just because they're not good people, even if they love their children, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, but, no, I, but I don't, I'm also not, I don't think that anything should be around to restrict them. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's a alternating, like, or mm-hmm. opposing dichotomies, which is, <laughs> that's just me, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have any sort of swear limit on, on the streams. We, we've kind of, we're past the 15 second mark or whatever well, that YouTube uses. Sort but... of. Their algorithm does say that. Our videos are so long though, and we don't swear nearly as frequently. Yeah, as... It's a yeah, it's a frequency thing. So if we were like streaming for twenty minutes and there was ten percent of the video was you know, <laughs> frequency <curse> words or something, <laughs> makes it sound like every time you swear it goes up into a higher register mm. that the <laughs> algorithm can look Holy for. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been uh, uh, Preston and Dallin have been talking about Diablo Four a lot lately. Yeah. So naturally. I want to spend a little bit of time tonight to talk about Pokemon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I I see I see the uh, <laughs> the, the thread. The thread. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was uh, I was going through uh, like every now and then Pokemon TikToks come up and mm-hmm. and I, I watch Drawfee programs and they talk about Pokemon and they were talking about their favorite and least favorite Pokemon and I realized that like I don't I don't really know what your favorite Pokemon is. <laughs> yeah, you do. Is it Onyx? Oh, it's Mewtwo. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. That was too easy. Um, but what I what I actually wanted to talk about tonight, not just what's your favorite Pokemon, and then we can move on. What's yours, Dragonite? Yeah. N- no, actually, uh, he's a close second though. Yeah, it's Snorlax. Uh, so but pretty good choice. Yep. But it, both just big derps, <laughs> right? That yeah. is the type of. Uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to. I wanted to think about what uh, your Pokemon trainer team would be. But not your, sorry, not trainer, gym leader team. But not your gym leader team. Bolt's gym leader team. Ooh. Yeah. And I think, like, and obviously, like, we don't have full access to knowledge about every single Pokemon because we are, we are first, second, and third genders at the most, you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe like all of first, most of second, and then like half of third gen. I think uh, Magnemite or Magneton oh, definitely that's, that's is. Oh, that's an absolute. Yeah, yeah. Is, is number one. I think Steelix. Steelix probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is going to be. Uh, yeah, Pokemon you're definitely like a, a steel like type gym, right? Yeah. Steel and. Ditto is my favorite Pokemon. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto is all Pokemon. Yes. Which, on a technicality, you are right. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it is also your favorite. Um, and I want other people to chime in on this, too, if you have any uh, cool Pokemon that you think would fit into Bolt's six-person team. I'd say Rhydon. Uh, yeah. Or Rhyhorn. Probably a Rhyhorn. Probably Rhyhorn. Yeah. I like the, I like the idea of, like, uh, you making friends with, like, a, a bunch of other, like, Stony creatures. Golem. I think Golem's kind of perfect, actually. Like, yeah. If we're talking first gen, yeah, just that's a good one. Golem or Graveler. Mm-hmm. 
Which do you like better? Which do you think has a I better like, design? Oh, man, I don't know. That's hard. Graveler. For me, it's Graveler. Uh, what? What's the smile? Like... What? I said that's hard. <laughs> oh, uh, I would definitely have a fairy type. Yeah, you'd yeah. have like one fairy type. Yep, based on uh, based on a little fairy dragon that we met. Oh yeah, Celebi. We'll give you a legendary Pokemon. I like shapeshifters. What can I say? I like shapeshifters too. Genghis Khan because it has a Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what about a bird? Get you a flying type because of Callisto. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Nobody likes flying types. The problem is, like, every time you make a, a bird Pokemon, they just look like a bird, right? Yeah, like it just looks like one yeah. from the newest thing. Yes, that's what you have is a flamingo. Yep. <laughs> Isn't there... There's, like, a, a fire pig now... I believe. Yes, there. I believe it is. I think uh, that was actually a couple generations ago. I believe. Oh, nice. Okay, I think you should have that one a for fire. your for your for your piggy bank. Okay. Okay. But they don't have like so they actually have a Pokemon that's literally a stack of gold coins now. I watched Jaden animation. Uh, her she unboxed every she unboxed ranked and put away every um stuffy not stuffy like little plush version mm -hmm. of the newest Pokemon. They Nintendo wow. sent an entire box full of all of them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Psyduck? Mm, could, yeah, Psyduck could be. Um, kind of a, an underdog. Yeah. Or an underdog, I should say. Torpig, yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah. And it just plays War Pigs by Black Sabbath. <laughs> Tor Pigs waiting in their castle. <laughs> I don't know how that, that song goes. Yeah, close enough. Yep. <laughs> close enough. Boy, do they sure look like asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I would yell, don't sing that part of the song. I hate it. Um, but the one, there's there's uh, a Pokemon from the new generation that's a stack of coins. Oh, that's pretty and cool. It, and it evolves from a creature that lives in a treasure chest and goes out and collects coins. Ah, like, a and, and like a mimic. Um, and, a, and apparently it's just, you have to have max money when it evolves and it will evolve into that form instead of its other form. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, it's like, because there's, it's not just like you just get them to a certain level and they evolve. Like there are tricks to make them evolve certain ways and things like that. Um, There is a... Man, back when we were playing, all we oh. had to do was... The trickiest thing was to find a rock. So what about there's like there's that one guy that looks like a big like a uh, stone tower golem thing. Mm. I I don't know the name of it, but uh, I don't know either because I again I don't know don't know a lot of the uh, more modern generation stuff. Maybe we give you a metacross, which is the big like steel that has like four pillar legs. Oh yeah. Yeah. It is Gorluck, I think, is the name of it. Yeah, he's like a big like oh, that knight. Just, that just looks like a like a Zelda thing. Yeah, like it does. A Breath, of, Breath of the Wild uh, <laughs> temple that walks around the city or walks around the world. Oh my gosh, the, the unevolved form is so cute. <laughs> it's been a while since I've like looked at Pokemon. So. That's a ghost type too. Interesting. That was another thing that I was thinking. I love all the ghost types and, like, psychic type stuff, too. So. Yeah. Well, you love it, but we're talking Bolt here. I know. But, you know, Bolt is an extension of me. Because <laughs> you can't just point. give yourself six Mewtwo's, Scott. Can I at least get can, one? Can you imagine if they just did a gym leader like that? Like, six of the legendary Pokemon? Back in well, my day. Uh, the is there a buttress is... Pokemon? <laughs> I'm sure there's something. There's probably one that looks like a building or something. And that would be one of the, like, region-specific ones. He's got, like, extra buttresses. <laughs> Let's see. Duraludon, apparently. That's kind of cool. When he goes Gigantamax, which is the huge form, apparently he becomes a skyscraper. 
So yeah, there you go. Yeah. But it's uh, like I said, it's it's a region specific one. So it's like instead of the Kanto one, it's the hey look, Corey, the pyramid one. That, that these are fan art. Oh, uh, I was gonna say the yeah. pyramid ones. You're walking pyramid from uh, yeah the temple of the <laughs> that is uh, definitely fan art. Eternal Gale. There's also a sand castle oh, one. There's one that's a sand castle. <laughs> that is that's a real one. There's like I like the ones that are like it's a key. Yeah, it's a sword. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Porygon. Oh, yeah, Porygon that, that, would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think Porygon would be a great uh, Missing no. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't have that. Why not? You, you just can't. It breaks the game. You broke your game. Why the hell not Mew 1, Mew 2, Mew 3, I Mew still, 4? I still have that game that's broken that I totally I totally borked because I was doing that trick where you, yeah. you put something in the fifth slot of your inventory, you go up and down the Cinnabar Islands beach until you run into missing no and then you and then you just run away and you force restart your game and give yourself like a 100 and, master and it balls gives, yeah it gives you uh 100 or maximum of whatever that item is yeah but it starts it starts corrupting your game over and then, time and then uh, yeah. yeah it corrupted my game really bad so so i read so i had to re- i had to buy a uh, new copy off ebay i didn't buy an original copy i just bought it someone someone took they like they get uh, reproduction cartridges, mm-hmm. and they just have boards that they just burn the ROMs to, and then yeah. sell them. Um, I was re- I I was going through early days of the internet. I found like a fan fiction thing, and it was a Pokemon fan fiction about missing no, and it was basically Ash experiences uh, true Eldritch horror because <laughs> because he sees missing no. And like everything starts to melt around him, and and, and then he wakes up and... from his coma. <laughs> I do like that theory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that all everything that happened in Pokemon is a coma, yep. or is coma fever dream or whatever, mm-hmm. and that's why he's still ten years old. Yeah, actually, so he's no longer the main character in the Pokemon series. No, it's Red or whatever, right? No, uh, they're they're. I, I'm not sure if it started yet, but they're bringing in a um, the, it's a female protagonist. I mean, that's about next. time, honestly. Yeah, but it's just like. It's just like Ash finally became the Poke- a Pokemon master, right? He beat yeah, the he Elite beat the, Four yep. and everything. And it's just like, okay, well, I guess I'm done then. And I did it all within the span of one year. <laughs> yep, 100 years. Yeah. And, like, I'm of two minds about uh, cartoons like that. Yeah. Because on the one hand, I'd love to see a cartoon where the character grows up along with the, the show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I would have loved to see that, uh, like, once Simpsons hit, like, season 10, they started having the characters grow up. And they do plenty of, like, future episodes where they go into uh, a potential future for Bart and Lisa, yeah, that kind but, of thing. Like, actually put them in their, like, teenage years and have them do, because then they can get into different more because, shenanigans. Because, honestly, okay, every teenager has a, a weird crush story, mm-hmm. and you can only go so far with... 10 year old yep. children otherwise yep. it's just gross and strange exactly you know? not that like you want your simpsons to go full game of thrones or anything no, like that no but you know as like, far as like content could, goes eventually they could go into uh you know getting married and going yeah. off to college and stuff yep but yeah and and then of course you can rotate the cast out you know as they die a little bit easier mm-hmm. because like you mean the actors? What the actors? Yeah, like I, I Miss, Mrs. Carwaffle, the one that voiced mm-hmm. her, she passed away. Yep, voice yeah. actress. And it's like, I know that. Uh, well, for I Sorry, like the Mrs. actress who plays Crandall this whole time. This is Crandall, the actress who plays Marge. Her voice is Marge. Uh-huh. I can tell that her voice is like older now, like way older. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. Anyway, we were talking about Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> what is your favorite type of Pokemon? Uh, like I said, I really like Psychic. Yeah. But Ghost is... They got some pretty cool, is, yeah. pretty cool designs. Like uh, Mimikyu. That's the one that wears the Pikachu suit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It, uh, it, I like the one that's like a lantern. That one's kind of cool. Yeah? Yeah. Obviously, the, the three original yeah. ghost types. <laughs> Can you believe there are only three ghost types? Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar? Yeah. Um, isn't there like a uh, an Eevee now that there's a can... there's a psychic version? Uh, Espeon. Espeon. Yeah. Umbreon is just dark, right? Umbreon is dark. Yeah. yeah okay. 
I thought there was a ghost one, but I couldn't. No, uh, because you would have to kill your Eevee in order to get ghost, the ghost I mean, type. that's what it takes to get them all. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are not, uh, n- not, uh, not a stranger to wanting to uh, do what it takes to be the very best, right? I want all the Pokemon. I don't care what it takes. I'll go talk to Giovanni. Get his help. Yeah, there's a ghost Pokemon that's actually a teacup. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, I remember that one. A- apparently, Gengar, Ghastly, and Haunter are now double typed too. They're yes. poison as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I guess makes them worse, probably because poison has never really been. I've never really. Uh, had a poison Pokemon that was ever like, oh yeah, it's so great that they're poison, you know? Yeah, because it was like Venomoth and Venonat and stuff, and they were okay, but they were like poison and bug, which bugs, if I recall, weren't that great. There's one called Trevenant, which is a giant ghost tree. Yeah. Treva. Treva. You know what's actually really funny? Uh, my favorite types are normal and ground. Yeah, I like I like a good normal and ground type. I do like normal because they do the, all the fighting ones mm-hmm. and stuff. Well, those cool. are fighting type. Oh, yeah. Didn't they used to just be normal, Mm-mm. or maybe no? Normal is like Nido Queen, Nido Ran, uh, Radita, yeah. Radicate. Yeah, I am. I'm. The, I'm a uh, human fighter, male human fighter, <laughs> Pokemon. You number, know, number three. Yep. You're not even. You don't even have your own name. But I do like uh, Sand True and Sand Slash. Uh, as ground types, those are pretty cool. So yeah, but I'm a big fan of like the Nidos. I think they're all really well, cool. And I always liked all of the. Uh, I liked um, like Pinsir and Scyther, and then like Metacross eventually, uh, Scizor, because they were yeah. they they were like the metal versions of the bug ones. But yeah, you know, I also like I like the bug ones. So yeah, they are really cool. There's one that's basically just a. Uh, an electric ghost that goes inside of your, like, Pokedex and whatnot. Rotten. Rotten. Anyway, I, that, I just thought that was fun to kind of think about for a moment. Um, yeah. While I paint? Yeah, while you paint, which is coming along pretty good. Change. You can you can really tell, like, the stonework in there now. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to differentiate between... Because there's like some wood, like veins and vines and stuff. Uh-huh. So I've got a couple different like wood colors. I got some like grass stuff to do. Uh, the uh, stone sword is going to be a totally different color than his stone body. Oh, cool! It's going to be yeah. an actual. It's going to be more of like this color. The dark stone. Yeah. Dark steel. It's the dark stone. Oh. We've got some. I've got some fun content planned for the Patreon, by the way. Yeah. Yep. I've got. Uh, I've got something that I'm working on with Tori. Um, that I'm. I'm gonna see if she wants to put up on her channel, or if. Uh, if she doesn't want the extra content there, we can put it up as a Patreon bonus thing. Um, I've got something that I'm working on for you for a project that I've been hounding you about, and now I'm dragging my feet on. Now that <laughs> you've given me everything that I need. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of really Which cool stuff coming. I have coming. no idea what it is. Yeah. Other than just, hey, I need you to send me these. And I went, okay, cool. Yep. Uh, you will see. <laughs> or not, if he doesn't get it done. That's true. Yeah. So. That could always be a possibility. I will try to get it done. So it's just. everyone get uh, yelling at Corey in the comments <laughs> and say, get it finished. It's just a matter of actually, like, putting everything together and making it organized properly. Because it's. It's a process that is going to be tedious. What I... Is what I... Well, uh, the, the things that you asked me to grab, I started looking through and I was like, holy crap, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not realize. You did not realize. did not realize how much there was. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about it. Okay, sure. We could, yeah, I asked you to send me every character you've ever played. As an STL or like as a yeah, Hero Forge figure. send me the Hero Forge figure. I I was gonna ask for a brief description too, but I decided against that. So, um, and Thank there you, were because I have I don't have time for that. There <laughs> were something like thirty four characters or something like that that you, you well, sent over. The funny thing is, is I don't I never thought I played. Send that me much. the secrets. <laughs> yeah, 
do something. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I played that many characters, and then yeah. I started actually like sitting down and. I even had to pull out some old binders and look through them and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes, yeah. I forgot about this. Yeah. And then there were some that I don't have any of their character sheets anymore because they're long gone, as in 4th edition decided, Wizards decided they were just going to shut their stuff down without... I'm sure they gave some kind of warning. Yeah, but you we know, never... But we, we, were, we weren't playing 4th edition at the time. 4th edition at the time. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have went in and saved a bunch of them. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, something exciting is coming that involves Scott's characters. Or terrifying. He always tries to kill my characters off. Yeah. No, it's a... We, you talked about it being a battle royale, and I like that idea. But, uh, <laughs> no. It's no going to be something royale. a bit sim, a bit more simplistic than that. Just because... I, like, I'm making it sound like it's going to be some grand adventure that they all go on together, but like it's not going to be nearly as amazing as all that. But it is going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. I've been so busy with the house, I haven't even had a chance to see the D&D movie, and I want to watch it with the Anaria Peanut Gallery. Oh, love! I, we would love to join you okay. in that. Do we recommend him watching it uh, prior to watching it with us? So we do spoil stuff. Yes, we do spoil stuff for like the thing. So you should watch it first on your own, mm-hmm. uh, and then when you have time, you can go back and or, watch it. Or if you don't care about spoilers, uh, join us as we sure. rant and rave about it. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of fun with that video. Yeah, we do. If anyone's not clear on the Patreon as a bonus content, uh, we do, Dallin, Corey, and I do a mystery science theater-esque yeah, thing I where mean, we, we sit and chat about. It's more just like commenting on it and just yeah, we're not discussing that's it. What I said, that's why I said yeah. esque. Yeah, but I mean like we don't want to give them the impression that we're just doing jokes the whole time. That's why I said esque. That means similar but not the same yeah but i think if you throw mystery science theater as the front runner people are going to assume but everyone knows funny, but not as funny but everyone you know? knows that that's what mystery science theater does is watches movies and makes comments on them yeah it makes funny comments on them. right makes that's why i said s <laughs> <laughs> we did get a brother versus a brother in the chat so we yep. should uh, move on i think that's actually when we should ever stop like arguing about something <laughs> is whenever somebody says brother versus brother we just, just go just stop oh, yep oh, all right oh, then oh. the brother's war has returned oh, well. and i am mishra <sighs> damn it yeah <laughs> i am mishra I said an area peanut gallery. Oh. I don't know what you mean. He means us, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're the area peanut gallery. Yeah. Right? Or do you mean like you're going to get a bunch of people on Discord to watch it with you? Because that'd be fun too. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, that'd be a, a, lot of like fun. a monthly like, movie yeah. watch along or yep. something. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I do like I do like the uh, what we did with those and uh, some we watched uh, some Jujutsu Kaisen, Jujutsu Jujutsu Kaisen with uh, Dallin and everything and um, that boy loves anime. Yep. Like oh my oh my gosh, I well, love his reactions. In and that, I think in those uh, he even said that he's a he's a like late convert to it too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and and you and I like we think it's fine. I've never been particularly like... You like anime a lot more than I do. Yeah. And that's why I think the next time I want to get uh, you two and... Uh, Preston. Preston. Yeah. Because yeah. Preston really likes anime. Absolutely. Yeah. But I do want to do more varied videos. I actually was thinking uh, about us recording uh, our first playthrough of Diablo 4 <laughs> and posting that as bonus content. <laughs> that's, that's the thing, though. It's like, I don't know... I don't know. We're. Not, I don't know what type of bonus content is going to be good. What What's going to make people want to join? Join, but at the same time, it's Patreon, and I'm. I'm like, I kind of just want to do everything. Everything. I just kind of want to experiment and see what works and see if something picks up. Yeah, I agree because I juju be kaizen. Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that um, we could do, but if we try to do it on the channel. It wouldn't work very well. Yeah. So. But it would work really well on Patreon and then mm-hmm. yawning. That's a thing that happens. Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing would be um, releasing them as YouTube member 
videos later. Yeah. But I like the idea of, like, a couple weeks, and then they're released as YouTube member videos, and then maybe, like, a couple more weeks, and then we release it as a... We just oh, publicly post it Speaking of like Bosco, how, uh, how have the early access videos worked for you? Yeah. Have you, uh, have you taken advantage, or have you been too busy and still watching it, basically, on the day of... <laughs> I know that there were a couple episodes. It's just been the fan shots, really, yeah. at this point. There's been a couple episodes where you, or at least one where you had watched it early and commented on it. I just wanted to make sure that they come across, they come out at the right time. Yeah. Um, I do think we need to do a speed paint video or two. Yeah. Because I think that. you have some in the bank that I you've do. done before. I do. And that we could uh, easily post up there as uh, some extra content. And I also, personally, I want to go through uh, at least the first episode of Tales of an Area and do like a director's commentary on it. I yeah. think that would be a lot of fun. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of get like our a looking back and be like, mm -hmm. oh man, it was so rough. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I've always wanted to, to go in and tweak the, because I still have the original audio, I believe. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to go in and tweak the audio and make it better mm -hmm. and re-upload it, but then it would lose all of its, like, all of the views and everything. And the time to do that would have been when we moved over from D&D yeah. uh, Optimized. <laughs> that was that was a rough week, though. That was I was uploading everything, and then, then they were all out of order, mm -hmm. and because they, they finished uploading at different times, mm -hmm. and it, it screwed up the ordering for them. Yeah, it was... Uh, and so I had to re-upload them all one by one. Or at least like get one like halfway done before the next one and watch it, and we were up until it was seven it was or eight a, in the morning. It was an all nighter. Yeah, we yeah. pulled an all nighter on that one, and then and then I called into sick. I called into work sick that day because I was like, "There's no way I'm going to be able to no, function you anymore." You went right upstairs and went to work. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, it was um. Probably the next day. It, no, it was the it was the 10k that I. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was the 10k that I was like. I, I'm I, I think I need to go I think I need to I, say I'm pretty sure I called in sick that day because it was uh, yeah. that was definitely a, a rough night for me yeah an area remastered I mean we'll release it on DVD yeah <laughs> digital download if <laughs> if we were to if we were to do things over again um Ezra would be an archer from the start yeah probably I think um but it would be it would be very interesting to see like Going through that and, like, making a show out of it. Yeah, I'm always curious. I've always wondered uh, how it would work with uh, Ezra staying a wizard the whole time. Yeah, agreed. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't know how it would have turned out, but I, I think it would have been interesting. Mm -hmm. I think, wasn't Dallin talking about playing a wizard next time for the fan shot? At one point, like I think at the end of the fan shot episode, he was he was talking about playing like a an evoker wizard, oh, and I'm like, well, he, he I think he just said that evokers are his favorite type, yeah, of wizard. And I and I guess a fan a, a one shot is different than a campaign thing, right? Because yeah. I'm like, that's the problem you had before. <laughs> I absolutely have been watching them early, and it's been working great. Awesome. Perfect. Glad to hear it. I have to. So the only way to. So if I try to schedule the video, this is a YouTube quirk. If I try to schedule the video to like say come out at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday, uh, then it puts it at private, not unlisted and scheduled, private and scheduled. So then I would have to individually invite every Patreon or anyone that want we wanted to watch, including people that already have access to the channel, yeah, uh, like the rest of the team, mm -hmm. and they can't even watch it until I go and add their specific email addresses. Yeah. So right now, they, they go up, they're unlisted, so that I can post them early, and then at uh, two minutes beforehand, I have an alarm go off on my phone, so that I can pull YouTube Studio up on my phone, <laughs> I go in, and I just wait till it hits 10, and I hit submit That's on amazing. making it live. <laughs> it's a little, a little bit of an annoying it's, it's quirk. It's janky, but, but it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. And I think that works better than like posting it somewhere else, or yeah. making a separate... Well, video, and if if we get enough people that want it, uh, I've always wanted to do um, ad free videos. Oh yeah. So I would upload. We would upload mm -hmm. two copies: the regular public one, and then we would have a private one just for Patreon. Patreon at that level. Yep. 
uh, and then it would be completely ad free, so you could watch them completely without advertisements. Yeah, and that would be great because you know that's. I think that's even like a that would even be okay as a basic tier like. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'd have to talk about it. Yeah, I I am getting so frustrated with that chat. I'm I'm getting rid of it. Oh, because it was just yeah, because it was sitting there spinning and it's been bugging me like crazy <laughs> on our so, own, on OBS. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it it was triggering me, Scott. <laughs> So we are going in on the roots now? We are going in on the roots. We're going back to our roots? Yep. Yep, I'm going with kind of like a lighter lighter brown, because roots are not usually dark. Yeah. You can pull them up from the ground, they're usually kind of pasty. Yep. Like myself. I know I'd like to go through like a Shattered Realms history video series too. Oh yeah. Going through the different realms and talking about the different uh, cultures and histories of each of them as they evolved after the, the shattering. Uh, I would love to do a, uh, a memorial video for all of the <laughs> lost members of the Wayward Watch <laughs> and have like... I will remember yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe get one of us to sing that terribly in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they could be like, this is the... Well, such and such the dwarf if died by having a rock fall on him. If it's Patreon, we can use copyright material because it's unlisted and it's not monetized. Uh, it still checks, though, I believe. Really? Yeah. I, oh. I'd have to go double check and see yeah. what how that works. But. A homebrew-only one-shot. Ooh, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Including the system. Homebrew system. Homebrew system. <laughs> We're just not playing D&D at that point. <laughs> Let's see. I'm what would what would be included? Like what? All of our classes would be homebrew? Everybody's class or at least subclass would be homebrew. Yeah. Because I think you need to keep at least some of the some of the core rules so everybody's not just confused out of their minds. So it would be subclass, uh, race, or uh, uh, species, whatever you call it, lineage, uh, ancestry. Ancestry. I'd yeah. be okay with even custom ones of those. Yep. Uh, I, I monsters. The one I played in this... Last one was that was a, yeah. a, it's kind of a homebrew. It was a third party that hadn't hasn't been released yet. Yep. The one thing that I I think is always funny about homebrew uh, ancestries, and I am I am personally calling them ancestries now just because I'm trying to be more conscious about everything all the time. Um, but um, I'm I everybody always creates their ancestries and they're like. And I'm going to give them this ability. And they, oh, they have this ability. Oh, I think this is really cool, a part of their culture too. And it's like most of the ones in the core rule book only have like two or three abilities. Yeah. Like you need to maybe temper well, that a little bit. They want it to be unique. And they want they want people, when they get their source books or whatever, they want people to actually want to play them, right? Yeah. But then, but then it becomes a unless your DM is playing in that world, do they allow that yeah. to happen? Well, and I so with Rumble, I had to talk uh, to Tori and say, "Hey, th this is what I want to do." And I sent her a screenshot of what it is, and and I and I I said, "Look over this and let me know if there's anything that you feel is like too OP or mm -hmm. won't fit with your stuff." Uh, and so I kind of had to get like a go ahead from her. Yeah. First. Which yep. I thought was good. It was good to get, it was good to get uh, kind of like prior approval. And that's how it always should be with homebrew, yeah, right? And I didn't want to like drop it on her at all. Yeah. Be like, oh, I'm doing this, by the way. Yeah. I didn't realize just how big our uh, our screen actually is, because we always see the tiny version because of OBS. You know, it always has everything up and shrinks the screen down. Mm -hmm. We actually, like, we have a bigger screen than I thought we did. Like, I thought that when it was the, on... the view? Yeah, I thought I thought when it was on this view, like, you could barely see us. But no, oh, you can see us yeah. just fine. Well, that's because we have everything all zoomed out for all, the, like, the extra, like, chat stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that this is the... I, I think I need we need to change the stream to just be mostly this view instead of the other one. Okay. Because, like, the painting is the big part, and we're just talking. Kind of like talking heads. we do with Preston. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I think I think we've done that. We haven't done that in the past, and I don't know if it's a detriment, but it definitely like is like the point of the stream is to watch the paint job. I think I don't want people watching me mess up, scrutinizing your every move. Every time, but I I make lots of mistakes when people watch. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I will not uh, choose to make the joke that it is it is in my head. <laughs> Ooh, don't. we saw the first episode of Strange New World season two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, if you haven't seen it, you should go check out season one if you have Paramount Plus or if yeah. you're willing to get in on it. I think you can watch the D&D movie on there, too, actually. Uh, you can watch season one. You can watch one or two episodes on YouTube, actually. At, oh, really? At the Paramount uh, channel. Oh, nice. There you go. I, I I am I'm pleasantly surprised by it, as usual. Like, it is a fun little uh, Star Trek show. It's always fun. Oh, it's... Always, always have a good session zero talk and continue having open communication between your DM players for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, like, I I do like to check in every now and then and be like, hey, how's everybody doing with the campaign? Everybody feeling like it's still good or, you know, mostly mostly to quell my inner anxieties of being yeah. like, it's shit, it's shit, it's shit. They oh. hate me. They hate everything I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is why we keep coming back every week. We're all a bunch of masochists. <laughs> and- and we hate everything you do, Corey. All well, it. Uh, to be fair, I have played games that I have not enjoyed for weeks because I'm I'm nice enough that I'm like, eh, well, you know what? They they're putting out the effort, <laughs> and they're a friend. You know, I don't want to hurt their feelings. So, and and my brain just naturally assumes that everything that I do, everybody else is doing all the time as well. Right, but there's right. only so. Remember, there's only so much. So for a couple of those games, like there's only so much you can put up with before you're like, oh, okay, I have had enough. Yeah, I, I'm done. Yeah, and you end up leaving. You know? Yeah. Hopefully on good terms most of the time. Other times you burn bridges. Yeah. And if they can't take constructive criticism or no. or you saying, hey, I, I don't really, I'm not really having fun, so I'm gonna bow out. If they if they can't handle that, then you probably don't want to play with them anyway. Yeah. That's that's a them that's a them problem, not a you problem. You know. And I know you no one wants to be no one wants to get into confrontations about that kind of stuff, but it's true. It's if you're not having fun, then you're not having fun and just because it shows when you play, right? Because you can tell when you can tell when one of us is having a rough day outside yeah. of the game mm-hmm. because we don't have the same kind of energy or we're really tired or whatever. Yeah. And you know, it definitely shows on the replay or like, you know, as yeah. as the funny thing is it doesn't show nearly as much as we think it does because people don't know us nearly as much <laughs> as we know each yeah. other. My campaign ground to a halt, my players threw me more knuckleballs at once than I could prepare for, and I went blue screen of death in my brain buckets. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I'm laughing, but I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, so Word of it, possible advice, uh, if you're willing to hear it. Um, there's no shame in saying, hey guys, can we uh, take a 15 or 20 minute break? I need to step back mm-hmm. and do or some even, prep. Or, or even a couple weeks. Let me. Yeah, let it me depends on where you're at in the story. You know? I don't think there's any shame in telling your players that, uh, oh, okay, so they're technically on summer hiatus, but I've got a ton of prep to do before we pick it back up. Okay, so it's not like it's uh, it's completely broken down or anything like that. And I, I don't think there's any shame in uh, going to your players as a DM and being like, hey, um, I'm going to have to ask for your patience as I work yeah, through like I'm a little storyline. Yeah, I'm like, going to figure this out. Mm-hmm. Because there's... I would, I would rather have that. I would rather have you come to us and say, hey, uh, I've hit a point where I'm struggling and I need to take a step back for, you know, a yeah. couple months, which we did. We took a little break between season one and two. And part yep. of that was just getting everything kind of reoriented and, and you were prepping for the next leg of the campaign. And Yeah. And it's turning out great. It is great. <laughs> I told you, we keep coming back. You have 20 plus episodes of us coming back. So. 25 episodes before we get out of an area. That's okay. <laughs> I have, I've had a lot of fun though. I think the storylines have been really mm-hmm. good. Um, Trust me, if we were the bored higher of level, it, you guys get the more worried I get though. If we were bored of it, uh, we would have probably been like, "Let's wrap like, it up." Let's, and, let's yeah. uh, uh-huh. all right, we're going. We're gonna. We're just gonna go. Yeah. We're just gonna head out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I had the setting prepped in OCD detail, but then they decided to leave the setting, and I had nothing. Ooh, Oof. here's the trick. The setting goes with them. <laughs> wherever they end up, and you just change the... Yep. Uh, wherever they end up. The, the name, yes. Yeah. your prep. Well, yeah. 
I, and I don't think that uh, anybody should ever believe that their DM is an an all amazing, fantastical storyteller that comes up with the most brilliant things and always like make sure to do everything perfectly, right? Because mm-hmm. I I never ever want anybody to watch our show to think that I'm like a, a DM that can do no wrong and all of my canon and stuff is perfect because it's not. There are things that I forget daily uh, as far as our campaign goes. And and like if the, if we had any sort of historian, they'd probably be pulling their hair out. I know because I try to do it every now and then and then go, I cannot believe that I forgot all of these <laughs> different things. I'm an idiot. <laughs> the safe word is coconuts. It's true. You never say the word coconuts in D&D other than uh, to stop the game. Uh, except for if it's uh, a Monty Python reference. I know. I know. <laughs> this is a coconut curry. <laughs> I, came up with. I don't know why I thought coconut bra first. And I was like, why would she have a coconut bra? That doesn't make any sense, Scott. <laughs> because we were talking about her being Ron I.E. Hey, close that R34 window. Oh, I'm Gosh. sorry. Yeah. The further down you go, the worse it gets. <laughs> now he's typing in R34 coconuts. <laughs> hey, welcome what IO over on Twitch. Glad what? to have you. IO. IO. Terrible joke. IO. Yeah. Coconut curry. Common flavor. Really? Yeah. Okay. Ask uh, ask Bosco. He'll that's tell you that's true, Bosco. Yeah. I'm not a I don't like Indian food actually. I, I've curries, had it curries are once or twice, yummy. and it just never appealed to my palate. Uh, I am I am white this is, bread. This is very were. cliche, but you probably haven't had the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is, there are very... You say that about candles, too, and so far you haven't proven to me that candles smell anything like uh, I can't other help, than candles. I can't help if you have no <laughs> no sense of smell. That's. I could have no sense of taste, too. I mean, I, I know true. that I have no That's taste. <laughs> Let's be fair here. Based I, on your favorite restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Part of that is... Uh, in, that always boils down to like nature versus nurture. How yeah. much of it is your genetics play a role in mm-hmm. what you like, but how much of it is... Because when we were growing up, we never had unique foods. It was always like mom had the same like six or seven meals that she kind of rotated through... And then the same, like, we went to the same, like, four or five restaurants. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And, like, my, they, they just became, like, such comfort that I didn't really branch out. Mm-hmm. I hadn't been to something like Chili's or Olive Garden until I met Casey. Yeah. Because it was just not one of the restaurants we went to. Like, Denny's was a fine dining establishment for us, right? Uh, Casey I, is right. I do hate the smell of flowers. I do not like the smell of flowers. And I, I hate Denny's. <laughs> I hate it. I, we, are, we are the same. <laughs> I, oh my gosh. I get so, I get so sick to my stomach every yeah. time I eat there. And it doesn't matter what I eat. Breakfast food, not breakfast food. I, I almost died Denny's. at a Denny's. Died at a Why? What? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like one of the few times in my life as a kid that I was choking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I think I remember this. Yeah, because I, I ate a mozzarella stick too fast, or too much of it, and the cheese got caught in my throat, and I was, and I was, it, I could literally feel it in my throat, like, going down the esophagus, like, rather slowly. I don't know how close you were to dying. You're, I mean. You're like. Yeah, we didn't have to do the Heimlich you were, you were or probably anything. like, ten, it was probably like, it felt longer, but it was probably like ten seconds of you going like. Yeah, no. but, but isn't it a great a better story if I say that I almost died at Denny's? Yeah, it's also a lie. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many though different smells. Yeah, so the problem is is that flowers just have a weird after smell to them. Like they all have this weird after smell that makes me go, "Man, eh, like that was fine for a moment, but now I have to deal with this, you know." So, are we talking about flowers? Because I said that I hate the smell of flowers, oh. or I don't, I don't like them. Like I, I've never smelled a flower and been like, mm, yeah, that's nice. You yeah, know? really. Yeah, because I, I know people smell flowers. like, like I, I don't like. Again, it's the same thing with candles, right? I don't go after. I like think I just have a bad nose. Oh, I, I, I think that my nose is 
not finely tuned. I think you're just biased against good smelling things. <laughs> probably. I just like trash. I'm I'm uh, Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> you're like probably. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, I I bought some uh, I bought some candles from uh, Firelight Fables uh, Candle Company. It's like a small little. Uh, is that wax cool enough that it's not going to drip on you? Yes. Yes. Um, but this is the samples, and I this is one of the samples I picked because I I wanted to get. Uh, yeah. So that one's ancient ancient library. To me, it smells like like moldy books. Yeah, I mean, I can I can kind of smell it, but it's not something that makes me go like. It doesn't immerse me in like the idea of a, of an ancient library. It just kind of smells weird. You know, I used to think that you I know actually what? it smells like uh, uh, our grandma on our dad's side's house. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, she had like she had a bunch of like she had like old books. <laughs> I wanted to say ancient tomes. <laughs> ancient tomes. Maybe but yeah, she, she did. Just, she know. had she had a small like little library, a bunch of shelves where she kept a lot of books and everything. So I used to always think that I had a really bad sniffer, right? Because there were a lot of things I couldn't smell, but I firmly believe it's kind of something you have to train. Yeah. You have to kind of constantly smell things and be like, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I can tell the difference between this and this. Yeah. You know? Whereas if you don't a lot, then it's like no big deal, right? You're kind of nose blind. Yeah. Like the one thing that I do like the smell of is new card smell for trading card game cards. Yeah, that's oh, similar to the yeah that like, like inky tones, smell. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that is like the one thing that I I will take an active sniff on. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a pack of those and put a fan in front of them. Yeah, and have them have a machine that makes them go <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> so, um, not to speak about a book series that we shouldn't be talking about anymore, but uh, speaking about our grandma, uh -huh. I got the sixth Harry Potter book from her oh, when yeah. it came out. Uh, I borrowed it from her because she was reading through all of them. Yeah. Um, and and I remember that my that mom or dad brought it home and said like said something along the lines of let her know when you, when it's done so we can get it back to her like quickly, you know. Yeah. And my my brain as a kid took that as read this book as fast as you can <laughs> because it needs to go back to grandma or uh -huh. else she'll be mad at you. <laughs> Because you know, Grandma Avis was always a little, uh, you know, she was she, she was a, she was very much, uh, <laughs> very much, not your typical grandma. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. she was uh, she was the callous type, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I I read that book in a day and a half. I read the sixth Harry Potter book in a day and a half, and then and then had like it sent back to her. Book, right? And like when I finished it and handed it back to mom, she was like, "Oh wow, you finished that quickly!" And it's like. Yeah, yeah, you, you told, told me, me to. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what was I supposed to do? What else am I supposed to do? Grandma's yeah. gonna get mad. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like six hundred pages or something yeah. like that. Well, and the funny thing is, is like we were borrowing it from her because the libraries were all out. Yep. And and she had already buying, finished. She it. was well. She was buying them, and she was buying like the big like leather bound yeah versions or whatever. And the funny thing is, now you can get like paperback copy for. Mm -hmm. You can get the whole set for like fifty bucks. Well, nowadays I would just buy it on Kindle. Yeah, and then I don't have to don't wait for it. it. Don't give don't give that witch any money. I it, I'm not talking about specifically Harry Potter. I'm talking oh, okay. about like any any <laughs> famous book. Yeah, we we won't give. I will, uh, I will, I will pirate that shit for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There is no money. No money <laughs> trades hands for that. Yeah, but yeah, it was um that was an experience of uh, that I'll always remember as. I think I was slightly nervous that grandma would get mad at me. And I was, I was like making sure that I took extremely good care of the book too. Right. Because I know like, I know how grandma is or was with that, that kind of stuff. She always well, wanted everything to be and orderly and proper and have, clean. We also have to come clean. You have an entropy aura. It's true. I don't know what it is, but you have an aura about you that things just stop working around you. Yep. You have gone through so many sets of speakers 
on that, your computer that and should it's not, be great speakers. Well, and it's not you've, like you you've given me like two year old speakers that had been working for you perfectly fine, and yeah. within like a week they were broken. Yeah, which you know technically that could be because they were two years old or whatever. But it like it like it always happens to me. I always yeah. have these these things just break around me. One time I hit a tether ball and the the cord broke off of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you jumped on a trampoline. I jumped on a trampoline and, right and, right and the pushed through, yeah, broke a hole right like, through the center. And on. I also was swinging on a swing and busted the swing, one of the, the chains. All three of these things happened at one friend's house. She did not like me after that. No, I'm just kidding. She still liked me. Um, it was, I think it's just, I'm just very hard on things. I'm, I always call myself like, I want to be a dragon, but I'm actually an ogre. <laughs> because I am very like clumsy and... and uh, pushing you know like i just i don't know my own strength but i don't have like i don't feel like i have that much strength so i feel like there are people and this is just me spitballing i don't actually know psychiatry about this but i think certain people have a better spatial awareness about their body than mm-hmm. others yeah and there are people that get are really prone to like accidents so maybe that's your thing is you're really yeah. prone to accidentally breaking things and yep. not realizing it. Yep. Because I know there's a lot of people that are constantly falling down, hitting stuff. They're the they're the mist they're in the mystery bruise club. Yeah. You know, like they have no idea where they got this bruise, mm-hmm. but it's been on their leg for three weeks. Yeah. You know, because they ran into something without paying attention. You know, and then there's other people that are just quite a bit better at at realizing where they where they exist in the world. Kids are terrible at it. Mm-hmm. If any of you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. They just have zero idea where their body is at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> They're just flinging it about randomly into the when cosmos. I'm, when I'm walking, yeah, when I'm walking through stores and I and I see a kid or something, I always keep a really close eye on them because I know they're going to come walking right in front of me. Is that why we've been kicked out of a few stores? Keep a close eye on them. Yeah, you no. just like, you're just watching all the kids, Scott. It looks really creepy from every other <laughs> angle. Uh, <laughs> but like you know that they're going to come walking right in front of you. They're going to run into your cart. They're mm-hmm. going to hit something that you're yeah. carrying and it's always I always am like, "Stop." And then they and then their parents are always like, <laughs> like "Damn it, get over watch here. Where, watch where you're going." <laughs> Uh, Casey says that she's the mystery Bruce. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the you're in the mystery Bruce club. Yep. Two, I too am part of the bag of bad luck club. Says Bosco. He also says that we should do a whole stream where we smell stuff and describe what it uh, or describe it in the most descriptive way possible. Uh, it could be a whole stream in itself, but y'all got to act like wine snobs when we do it. Ooh, okay. Ah, yeah. I can get a ton of different candles that. So I have. A bunch of these. These are like D and D style candles, mm-hmm. and I can make Corey sniff them, and he can try to guess like, like what they are. But I'm gonna make him go on a regiment of like smelling things for the next like few months, <laughs> so that he gonna gets to the point where he make can actually... sure that we uh, we do some nasal spray to clear my sinuses yeah. right beforehand. Yeah. yeah. My daughter is an absolute wrecking ball. <laughs> I have friends. I have friends that post. There's one friend. Oh my gosh. Her her son has broken or two sons have broken five TVs now by throwing controllers into them. And it's not an anger thing, it's an accidental like they were doing the Wii stuff and it like comes flying off their hand or you know, or they were fighting and something came come flying off them and slammed into it and busted it. And I was like, one, one is an accident, two is a I'm taking your allowance <laughs> to replace this. And I'm also putting up a piece of protective plexiglass yep. in front of it you know well, that's what the cabinet are... doors used to be for right yeah you could, hide, you could hide the tv and and have it be safe back yep. there yep i liked ours growing up we had the little roller cabinet that was like that uh yeah the... yeah it was like a little like plating thing mm, always felt good that was a good tactile sensation for me i think dexterity and agility are is a finite resource i was a four sport jock in high school there's a stupid like I heard in that the as, way. I heard that know. as poor, poor sport. <laughs> poor sport. <laughs> I was a poor sport jock. <laughs> and an accomplished and accomplished on multiple instruments. And all of my shirts go in the wash. <laughs> Coffee stained. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like you have to like put that uh, put those points into somewhere. And sometimes Charisma you just gets the dump. Yep. Yep. I know Colby has a few sponsors of this company that makes candles based on classes. 
you've guessed uh, yeah, which, which class it is? We've had a few. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he actually brought, yeah. brought some over at like one of the last we times he came over. Wizard and Paladin. Yep. So that that could be fun too that, to add that in there. Yeah, I could cover the labels, light them up, and mm-hmm. yeah, to light them up actually, you can dispel them. Yeah. But. but yeah, I mean, I've always been hard on technology and and everything, and it's through no fault of my own. It's just my 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 mind doesn't realize like how much pressure I'm putting on things sometimes, I guess, or yeah, yeah. or like you said, stuff just breaks. It's I, happened before. You and know it'll what? Maybe again. it's genetic because um, our father is uh, That's true. very tough on, he fixes all kinds of things and he can build all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But every time he has to like have a panel removed in, it his, is my in curse. his uh car or his truck, he always calls me because he's like, I can't do it without breaking them. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, there's something about, something about like, I don't know if I just know materials well enough that I can, I can feel when something's about to give and I can be like, okay, that's as far as I can bend it without yeah. it breaking, you know? Yeah. I don't think I've ever like, uh, had dad help me fix the car where something didn't, uh, snap off and we had to go buy a new bolt or something like that. Today, although today I, uh, pull out the weed eater and I noticed that the guard, uh, at the bottom that covers, so it doesn't flip stuff on you was really loose and I was like, oh, I'm going to go tighten the wing nut on it. And I grab the wing nut and I barely start twisting it. Crack. And it crumbles because it was just it was just rust so rusty. <laughs> and it came apart in like four pieces and I went, okay. And then I went and like went to wiggle the guard and it's, it's, it was rusted solid on there. And I'm like, I guess, that's, I I guess, guess this is happening. I then. guess that's it. Yeah, this I guess how that's going to be. That's how it's going to happen <laughs> until you get a new one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even going to fix it. I'm just going to save up. And I'll just buy the, the uh, battery powered one. <laughs> I heard that Victor's can also be useful for fixing cars. Yeah, Preston does know his way around a car. If that's what you meant. <laughs> um, I actually have... Uh, I fix cars pretty well. I've got yeah. a, I have got actually have a project vehicle in the driveway right now. Well, technically I have two. I have one in my driveway and one at my parents. But... <laughs> I keep forgetting about that truck. Yeah. Every time we pull up, oh, hey, your truck. Oh, hey, yeah. I forgot it. Because you got that for... It's a brand, it was like a brand new... It was a 20... 19? No. 2007. Uh, Yukon. Oh, that was a stretch. You said bolts, so Victor's... Oh, okay, I get you. I get you. No, I I, I heard it now. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a 30-second ban for what I owe for a terrible pun. <laughs> you are silenced. <laughs> silenced. Silence. It's a self-imposed, though. Yes. We don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, uh, but you got it for pretty cheap because I got it for 1500 bucks. Yeah. So the guy, the guy bought it to take, haul his family around and, uh, it broke like three times in the span of a week. Well, right? well he went and he had all the, he had every fluid changed and flushed all the gaskets replaced on the mm-hmm. engine upper and lower, uh, had the rear end flushed, had it redone because it was making noise, all brand new tires all the way around. Yeah. Fully detailed, had like the rear hatch fixed so it would actually open. Drove it all the way back from Arizona. He bought bought it for ten grand. Drove it all the way back from Arizona. Get all of his family loaded up and ready to go to Disneyland. And they get like six miles away and the engine locks up on him. And he at that point he had spent he get I have all the, the paperwork and he had spent like sixteen grand on it and he was just like, I am John with this thing. I, I don't give a crap. I'm gonna just throw it in the trash. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, this is was a coworker's brother. Yeah, and I said, "Well, hey, if he doesn't want it, tell him I'll give him fifteen hundred bucks cash for it." Yeah, and he's like, "Ha ha!" And I'm like, "Hey, you know, whatever." Um, yeah. And I went back to work. Two days later, he's like, "Were you serious about the fifteen hundred? I was like, "Yeah, if he wants." And he's like, mm-hmm. "He said he'd do it." And I was yeah. like, "Okay, done." Yeah, because okay. I can put a whole new engine in it for like twenty five hundred bucks. You know, yeah, if I need s- to, and then sell it for like six grand or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, still worth eight, I think. Also need to check my car. And my car, yeah. There's a lot of uh, checking that needs to be done. Yeah, I need to clean the garage. It's, yeah. it's a little full of junk. But, yeah, I got I got car stuff. I got that one. I've got my I got my project vehicle that I've been wanting to put together for a while. My Tahoe. Yeah, your Tahoe that also had an engine issue that you had to, you're basically having to replace the whole engine. Well, right? I was rebuilding it, and then I lost my job. Mm-hmm. I got laid off. And it was like, well, I'm not rebuilding it anymore because yep. uh, I have no money. And then I finally got a good enough job where I was financially secure to start working on it again. And then you fell into a hobby. Yeah, too many hobbies. Yep. I have way too many hobbies. Yeah. 
I don't know if people can see because typically your chair is in the way, but you cleaned up down here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the big pile of uh, Star Trek ships is gone. Uh, now it's just a Eagle smaller Mall. pile yeah, of books. Yeah, it's just a smaller stuff. pile of books, and you can still see some Star Trek ships in the back there. But I can but, actually uh, stand on the ground. Yeah. You could put a table back there if you wanted to. Our, our brother-in-law, when he came over, he's like, <laughs> he, he walks over there and stands awkwardly. And we're like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm standing in a place in your house I've never stood before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, it had really been fair. that long. Like, yeah, he's been our brother-in-law for two years, three years three now. Three years, yeah. Three yeah. Years. And yeah, he's never stood there. Uh, but yeah, being... You were talking about um, how you just needed like one month where nothing broke, and that would be that would make you so happy. <laughs> yeah, because everything is always like breaking all the time. You had like potential flooding that you had to deal with. Um, uh, I had my fridge needed to be replaced. Nah, yeah, that was a. Uh, I had my. I've had like some a couple like light medical things that have been crappy. Mm-hmm. Like your elbow. Uh huh. Yep. Which we talked about earlier in the stream. If you weren't here for that, Scott painted so much that he locked his elbow up and, and made it swell and go like red yeah. hot. Nearly infected it with the. Yeah, you can't see yeah. it, but it was uh, <laughs> it was swollen to about like this this tall up here, and then on the end it was like that tall. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was uh, it was bad. It was hard to move. And... Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it has been just like a, a rains and pours kind of thing. You've still got the. Uh, you still got a big hole in your kitchen from where you were from all the plumbing. Yeah, issues. from where you were t looking through plumbing issues. Yeah, that that I could fix easy, but I'm I was being super paranoid about it because it had leaked once, and I thought I had it fixed. I put everything back together, and like three months later, leaked again. I'm like, ah. Yeah. So then I go back into it, and then I do even more repair on it. Mm -hmm. And now I've been paranoid and just like <laughs> constantly checking it. And yeah, you're like I finally at the point I can close it yeah. up. But eventually, the plan is to get a whole new rig set up. Yeah. Yeah. And some new cameras, too. Yep. That'd be nice. Yep. Yeah, I definitely want new cameras. Um, because the ones we have are okay. But the problem is, is I can never get them to focus properly. I can't get them to... The white balance on them is way off because they're just webcams. Mm -hmm. And so they don't handle dim light very well. So they're either super overblown because there's too much light... Or they're really dark because there's not enough light. And yeah. they're all different, too. Every single one of them, I can set them all the exact same settings. And camera one over you will be perfect. But then camera, the camera for, like, Dallin and I will be super dark. And then mm -hmm. for Tori and Preston, it'll be super bright. And it's yeah. like... And they're the same model, same make, but they're stupid webcams. I think, so. the, I think the lighting in the room probably has something to do with that, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's supposed to be a theater room, so it's naturally dark, right? Yeah, yeah and it's like... Oh no! Wait, we need light. Yeah, and so, but we use it as our studio. <laughs> yeah. So I've been adding lights to it as I can, and uh... oh, sorry, tangent. Okay. Um, speaking of lighting, lighting. I found. You know how? Um, so last night, little spoiler, we did we did some stuff, and I I had some of the table lights go a certain color. Yeah. So that like the minis and stuff look look a color. Mm -hmm. Uh. I want to do that, but I want, I was talking about, I wanted like a more narrow focused light mm -hmm. so that it was so more just, spotlight yeah, on rather the, than on the map. Itself. Yeah. Cause it was, even though they're only like, hmm, you know, two feet away from the thing, they glow wide enough that it lights us up as that color too. And I don't like that. I don't want that. Yeah. I want us to just be us colored mm -hmm. and I want the like battle cam to be, uh, colored, whatever. Well, I found some lights that are pretty cheap that are like, DJ LED oh, nice. R, like RGB with the white bulb and so does, we can we can get, come with the disc spinners so that we can uh, well they can do they can do patterns drop the bead on this they can initiative. do patterns and they can do uh, <laughs> flickering between the two and they can do like really smooth like ramping transitions between stuff you can oh, mix cool. and match them yeah. and you daisy chain them all together and they each have an address so it'll be like light one light two light three light whatever mm -hmm. and so it's all plugged in the computer and then you can use like stream deck or something push one button and it changes all the, all the spotlights to yeah. whatever cool. combination I think and they're pretty they're pretty affordable they're like you get 10 of them mm -hmm. for like 130 bucks and they're about mm, yay big 
So that's not too bad. No, and so you could use them all over. You could use them as like accent lighting around the room where they were like, mm -hmm. if if the walls were white, you could like do shining down the wall a certain color. We could yeah. have them pointed at the screen so that they make the screen grow really bright behind you. No, that, that, was pretty, cool. that would be pretty cool. Um, I know that. What I'd like to do if we do something like that would be, oh my gosh, this guy's looking amazing. That is awesome. He got the roots. Is that Going fur or is that roots. grass up on his? That, I think, is grass. Nice. It's Very grass. cool. Yeah, grass, right? Yeah, that's grass. Scott is a joke slayer. Yeah, sometimes. It better come with turntables. <laughs> he just got really excited about this topic. Yeah. So I'm going to do the grass and uh, like a light green. Yeah. But, uh... Cool. Yeah, I got the roots. Light green? Yeah, like a kind of like this. Um, I uh, are you sure? Like that. Like almost. Okay. Almost like you know when grass starts going yellow because it's uh, yeah. getting yeah kind of old and okay. stuff. I was just thinking a darker might or, or something might like fit, maybe fit that one. The palette that, that kind of green would be kind of cool. What do we think? Lighter green, darker green. So I got this one, or that one. Militarum or Plague Bear's Flesh? Uh, middle finger good. or index finger? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'd want to do if we do something like that is I'd like to just sit down and go through like a bunch of different biomes and make the the scenes mm -hmm. for it because yeah. that's something that we always like Forest, talk about doing. Lava, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ice, void, you know, cavern. Yeah. And yeah. then I want to get uh, a stream deck for up there. So uh, Casey says Plague. Plago. Yep. Plague. Plague. Thank you. The dog's down here. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's being quiet. Ish. 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 Yeah. Well, quiet -ish. Up until now. Yeah. Up until this very moment. And now we're kicking him out. No. Yeah, but part of that is when I rebuild the rig, I'll have a lot of... Uh, oh, someone says military in Bosco. Okay. We got one and one. One and one. Um... Rebuilding the hanging, the, how everything hangs from the ceiling is going to be a good benefit, I think, because we'll be able to add a bunch of that stuff. Spotlights, lighting effects, you know, uh, some of the the lights that Tori brought over to let us try oh, out. Oh, yeah, the really nice. lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you Those noticed in the last, really well. th you'll see them in the most three recent videos or two recent videos, mm -hmm. and then one coming out. We have, like, they're like warm lighting, but they're very diffuse, so they're not harsh, so they light up the whole table and us without without casting like a lot of shadows or mm -hmm. anything yeah like like in this room we've got every light in here on and there's still like you yeah know, shadow stuff and, yeah and which is not we need, we need to get a couple of those that we can permanently set up there but Hail to the doggo but being able to, to hang all that just up do plague cool. plague yep just do plague okay I'll, I'll submit on this one but you have to submit on the next one <laughs> I already had I already had the group choose my uh, belt buckle. Remember, it's That's pink true, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> or bolts belt buckle. Bolts the belt buckle. Bolt, bolts belt buckle. The bolt buckle. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited um, to get everything reset up because it'll be so much nicer to hang things and it won't feel as cluttered. Yeah, up there. And I think the way that you're going to do it, it won't be as obstructive for us when we're, like, standing up and sitting down. Is that correct? I'm, I'm going to try. It all depends on what, where I can put the new cameras. Yeah. Because if they can't be put very far away, then they're going to be kind of in the same spot. But at least when we're uh, not using them, they can be, like, uh, accordioned up against the ceiling. Or yeah. Scott. Forgot to turn your sound off. You were the one last one playing on it. I do not control the sound on your tablet, sir. It doesn't matter if I have been on it. Actually, it shouldn't have any sound. I don't know why it noise. <laughs> I always leave it down to nothing. Yeah. Just because that's what the one I use for game night. Um, have you been using the uh, Serenscape stuff uh, more? Creating, like, my own sounds? No, but just using them because of Tori found that uh, filter. So uh, no, it's, it's much easier to find what you want now. No, I well, the filter is nice, and it does it does make it a lot easier for me to grab something really quickly. the The problem is that I'm I'm very bad at uh, all the the tertiary stuff. Yeah. 
Like, I'm I'm really good at making sure the game is... I Wait, I shouldn't say that. Making sure that the game goes forward. I won't say that it is prepped because <laughs> that is that might be a lie. There's that. The plague. Okay, the all right. Switch. Yep, I can see that the plague was a good choice. Yeah, yep. because if I think about it, like, you know, the grass isn't getting much... Uh, I was just thinking as far as color scheme, like everything else looked dark, so having that as also a dark color seemed right. But I gotta think have, gotta have some contrast. Yep, gotta right. have contrast. It's all contrast. Yeah, paint. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. so, Thank so. you. Yeah. Um, okay, but well, uh, <laughs> good job. Anointed with contrast. <laughs> just like to dip your finger in it and like paint a sample. Yeah, down your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> over the glasses. <laughs> Yeah, down both of them. <laughs> oh, I meant like the middle, but yeah. <laughs> but like you've got your combat yep. like with the cross glass. Now for the sword. Now for the sword. Thought you were gonna do that the darker stone. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna do that darker stone. What was I gonna say? Oh, Serenscape. Oh. About Serenscape. Yeah, I I need to like actually work with it a little bit more and find some good stuff the problem is like i mean could, so i have to i have to kind of toot my own horn mm -hmm. a little bit because we were playing uh my game oh yeah and you guys had got to a spot and you stopped and you were all chit-chatting amongst yourself and i just kind of casually reached over and tapped one of the one of the uh pre-made scenes on serenscape mm -hmm. and uh it started going and it slowly rose in volume yep not, and it wasn't super loud, but these guys were all in the middle of their talking, the and they the all went... We, we just stopped, because we hear this rumbling. And they just all turned to me, and then I went, roll initiative, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Or I, I, I got it's them into, what, happened, into yeah. what was happening, mm -hmm. and they, it was funny, because they were all like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this, and then it got louder and louder, and they all went, need a minute, Wait, what is going this, on? <laughs> this doesn't sound right, like... What's going on here? Oh, yeah. I'm scared. It was that, that was a good session. I really enjoyed that session. I did too. Yeah. Great Lord, great. That's the one I need. It's always a worry whenever you like uh, railroad your players into being prisoners for for a bit because you're like any adventure could take on any band of guards, you know. But yeah. at the same time, it's like I want I want to have this story beat kind of thing. So yeah. So how do I do it properly? And, and they all got captured. Mm -hmm. And it worked really well. We all, uh, we escaped. I, I fell on somebody, <laughs> which was nice. Oop. You fell on someone and you also, uh, um, used a magic item that I gave you. That, yeah. That you were like, I, I took out, I, I think you're going to regret giving me this. And then you, I took out three people in one, in one turn with it. Mm -hmm. Like it was insane. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Yes. It was a great moment. And it definitely used up, like, all of my charges on that magic item anyway. So it was one of those things. I need stats for a magic item brainstormed. It shall be Bolt's Bjorn of Safety. <laughs> I am adding this to a random treasure table for my world for when I get a game going. Ooh. Yeah, like, I think, I think what it is is the Bjorn can hold a, a creature of a size category smaller than... Than one you. smaller than you, or one or more smaller than you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're medium, small, etc. Um, and the creature inside gains a plus one bonus to AC, but has a movement speed of zero, right? Yep. Has to move, have to, has to be in the same square as the wearer. And then the uh, the wearer of the Bjorn can use their reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack, like they have protector, basically like sheltering you and you know like covering you in the Bjorn uh, there. If it's going to be a magic item with extra stuff, I would say it probably should have attunement. Mm -hmm. And that. and uh, make it so that they can have a short rest while traveling if they are in the Bjorn. If you're in the Bjorn, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Like, not not the person wearing the Bjorn, just the, the one person uh, inside. inside. Yep. yep. I agree with that. I think that's a good way to do that. Just saw that Monty Cook Games is having a moving sale on all physical products. Oh, interesting. What? Do, oh, what do they make? Oh, um, I've had Mon some of their stuff. Isn't that? Um, um, I think they do absolute power, don't they? The RPG. Maybe. No, I thought it was the. I thought it was the one guy that did the the fourth edition, fifth edition characters. 
or uh, monster stuff that I bought. The flea mortal stuff. Yeah, flea mortal. Mm. I thought it was that one. That Brian, who is what is Monty Cook? Do they what are they what are they uh, I mean, known for? It, yeah. I mean, we could, but this we're also yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that plane was a really good choice. I'm I'm regretting re I'm like doubting your ability, sir. <laughs> I just really like it for grasses. I think it works great for like the yeah. yellow, more yellowy, yellowy grasses. I'm just terrified that we're going to fight this thing. You don't have to fight everything I that's put true. in front of you. That, that's, that's very true. <laughs> did you want to show off your uh, creature that you did have us fight on our last session? Uh, yeah, sure. It's, it's in the cabinet, mm -hmm. left side, right above the... Uh, it's in a tote. I'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. Cabinet left side. Wait a minute. Maybe I won't find it. You know, the mini cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not a small cabinet. It's the cabinet that has all the minis. But yeah. Yeah. I need to get that. Uh, I need to get that edited so that every one of you can can watch it. A Bjorn is a bear. I thought, I just said it was a Bjorn because it was uh, like the baby Bjorns. I don't know. Is Bjorn like Scandinavian for bear or something? Uh, I'm not sure. Here. Here you are. Pass it under the table so that we can build the suspense. This is what they had to fight. It is. Uh, it was terrifying, actually. I was really worried that it was it was gonna kill us, and it, it almost tried. did. It yeah. tried. I'm looking up the origin of Bjorn right now. <laughs> you should also look up Monty Cook Games. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we'll figure that one out. <laughs> From Scandinavian and Old Norse origins, Bjorn might be the perfect name for a cuddly little... Oh, wait, this is about baby name meanings. Okay. Um, means bear. So it does mean bear. Aw, oh, bears. Aw, <laughs> oh, bears. You're part of the bear pack. Lower Decks, if you haven't watched it, it's great. If you like Star Trek, you'll love it. Fantastic. Awesome animation, great characters, like better character arcs than than ninety percent of the Star Treks out there. That worm is so badass. Yes, it was. Yeah, it is. So and cool. uh, I heard that you helped uh, help troubleshoot some homebrew on that worm, Bosco. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Yeah. I definitely will probably release a more polished version of that once uh, once I get that episode uh, edited and released. Because uh, I really want to... I don't want to... My game, I don't care if we make any money off of it or anything. I just want to release it so that everyone gets to see the crazy crap that I... Yeah, I mean, try to put you guys through. <laughs> I think I think you've got that first arc done. You should start editing and yep. working on that. Also, um, we need to have uh, we need to do the editing on the second Pathfinder game mm -hmm. because that's all the pre edits are done on that. I think. Yes, I think I have that done. So, yeah. Yep, you did. And now I got to touch up wherever I touched it with my fingers because little tip about contrast paints: don't touch them until they are. Like a hundred percent dry, and they've cured for a couple hours because otherwise they will, they will be kind of tacky. And they'll stick to you, uh, and then you will uh, pull them right off of whatever you had them on. Mm -hmm. So, but so, unfortunately, there's sometimes there's no way to hold a figure, and you just have to make you sacrifices. To, yep, you just have to make a sacrifice. Yeah. So uh, Bjorn Jacobson launched the baby bjorn which is one word baby bjorn, baby bjorn. right which is baby bear right yeah. uh 
based on the design. So that's it's basically based on his name and the fact that it's like baby bear. Like, oh, it's you're like a baby bear, okay? So that's all that that means. <laughs> okay. uh, it's not as cool as the bolt yarn. No, I will say that. Which is uh, if which is the alternate universe where Bolt is a druid, yeah, and turns into a, a mechanical bear. <laughs> oh, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about something else cool that I picked up. Um, First of all, you just got uh, mega praise for your DMing skills in the Pathfinder game. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I had I had. First episode, uh, I was super nervous on Pathfinder because yep. new system, never really played it. Yep. Um, and there was a <laughs> there was a good amount of time between when we started by the time we ended where I had paused the game and, and it's cut out, but I had spent like like ten minutes trying to look something up because either the site I was using was really slow or I was looking in the wrong spot. And I finally started. I finally got myself like a tailored set of websites and stuff that I open every time I DM Pathfinder so mm -hmm. now they can just like flip back and forth yeah but I I took I took the abomination vaults uh basically like root level one and just took everything in it read through the whole thing and took everything that I thought would be even semi-relevant and like put it into my own words into not a shorthand but in a way that I could read it really fast yeah so that when you guys were like, what's in this room? I could like, here's a quick description of the room that I could like yep. just kind of play off of. I could be like, oh, it's long, it's tall, does this, does this, has this, you mm -hmm. know, and I kind of do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've kind of done the same thing with theorists. Uh, there's been a few times where I've gotten quite frustrated because I was, I'm using like a... A, a, a homebrew module. Yeah, with, and, homebrew yeah. module from Cast and Play. Mm -hmm. uh, that you're putting into your own world and... They are, they, I... I I believe they don't speak English as a first language. Mm -hmm. uh, not that that's bad. It's no. just there are a few times where I'm reading through and some of it just doesn't make sense because like the sentence structure is a little strange or, uh, you know, they, they'll leave something out or they'll like make a change halfway through the paragraph. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh. and then I'm like, wait, which one is it? Like, you know, and it's not like they say it wrong one, one time in one line and then everything else in the whole rest of the module is different. It's like, Mm -hmm. That's the only time this person is mentioned or this thing is mentioned. Yeah. And, like, it'll say one way at the top and then halfway through the switch. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm just winging it, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a lot of prep. But I don't prep I don't prep everything that the players can do. I kind of am just like, here's the areas that they could go to. Let's see what happens. Here's, yeah, and here's some things that could be could happen there. And then, like, here's a couple couple of yeah. uh, encounters i know that i have had a lot of fun developing my character for the pathfinder game i i absolutely adore lady d and i can't wait to see yeah i can't wait to see more about her story unfold yeah. and everything yeah i i the more we do it uh the more i'm going to not stray from the thing from the vaults i'm going to kind of weave in stuff into it mm -hmm. because the event the abomination vaults is an adventure that is all like 100 percent a dungeon run yeah like it is meant to be like you start at level one at the top and you just like go down the levels and every level you're supposed to be roughly the same level as that level mm -hmm. you know level two is your level two level three is etc yeah. and and that's cool but there's not a ton of story and i granted i haven't read too many levels ahead so I could be like by level five or six, there's maybe a whole bunch of extra backstory that they do, but yeah. it doesn't really flesh out the world. And so I'm going to have to start doing more of that. Yeah. On you're going to have to start. Yeah. Yeah. Populating it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing the same thing with adventures of a theorist. I'm kind of just making sure I go through and, and, uh, and I'm like, okay, hey, I, the module or the chapter or whatever says, here's the basic outline of what we're doing. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm just going to like try to like, cut it into a jigsaw that fits into what I want exactly. it to be. Yeah, cut that piece into what you need yeah. instead and, of and I and I did that last time for the last for the most recent game. I really did that most recent game and I felt like it went better than most of our other games as far as like I, I honestly stuff was going on. I, I didn't notice a difference. I, I do. But, but that's because yeah. I, I see everything from a ten thousand foot level. Mm -hmm. I can see all the storylines and all the stuff weaving together. You you know you made your character level ten thousand. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you have, have to fight to, him. You just have to be the Superman, huh? Yeah, 
Yeah. Is that him? <laughs> is, is, is this guy him? Is no, this what no. we've been doing tonight? No. Level 10,000? Speaking of, he's done. Yes. Looks really good. I just don't want to touch him too much. Yep. Uh... I love that sword style. Yeah. Yeah. Big stone store. Yep. Big stone and then you sword. can work on the, the oh, yeah, and then broken he's got portal. The, like I said, he's got this broken portal that comes with. And I'm going to put each one of these on their own stand so they stand up on their own. Yeah. Clear stand. And then, like I said, I have a whole bunch of these little rocks that are supposed to, like, be floating. And I'm going gonna, gonna to connect them all with some uh, thin acrylic rod. Yeah. Again, it looks like a Stargate. So let's let's go ahead and actually dial home because <laughs> that's a great transition. Yeah. Because it's nine o'clock. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. literally hit nine right as. Oh, here's here's the yeah. acrylic rods. Acrylic rods. Yeah. All hail the inanimate carbon rod. Yes. Oh, I want to talk one last thing. I got these cool things I want to try. Oh, they okay. are, they are uh, switching cams back and forth here. Vallejo pigment powders. Ooh. And I kind of did something on the worm. You can kind of see how it's dusty. Yeah. That's from pigment powder. Oh, it looks good. And, I, and you just dust it on, and it's super fine powder that makes it act like real powder in the world. And I've yeah. got uh, new rust, old rust. Just uh, rust. Just rust. Uh, brown iron oxide, light sienna, natural umber, light slate gray, and like yellow ochre. And I'm excited to get to try all that. Yellow ogre? Yellow ogre. <laughs> but that's it. Next time? Yes. Next time? We're, I'm painting a uh, a crazy mountain giant or a crazy giant. Oh, you're going to print one of those off? They look so I, good. No, I'm going to print the whole set off. You're going to print the whole set? I ordered, I ordered resin. Just in time for Big B's uh, monstrous vault of giants or whatever the hell it's called. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. It was really fun to hang out with everybody tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget to, if you if you're not on our Patreon... Or not, sorry, not on our Discord. Go join our Discord. It's free. Or you can join our Patreon, which you get uh, instant access to special tier Patreon or yes. uh, Discords. Yeah, we have, a two, we have a $2 level mm -hmm. and a $5 level. $2 level gives you uh, uh, Patreon announcements. It gets you a, a private Patreon or Patreon Discord channel. Yeah. Um, and $5 does the same thing uh, with its own private one as well on top of that. Uh, and it also gets you... Uh, early access to our videos. Right now, they release on Monday at mm -hmm. 10 instead of uh, Wednesday. Uh, and you also get bonus content. We got videos up already, and we've more got more planned, and we've got more other content, and we yeah. would love we would love your support, and it'd be fantastic. It helps us a lot uh, to keep making even, even more stuff. Yes, and like Bosco mm -hmm. always says, thank you so much. Like the stream, comment on it. Yep. Um, share it if you can. Uh, yeah. Share our Patreon if you think you know someone that would be... And they would want to join. And... Uh, once again, no episode next week. We're yep. taking a week break uh, so that we can record, recuperate after the fan shot and maybe, kind of split it up. Maybe next week we'll uh, what? we'll make some Star Trek characters and paint them. Well, next week it'll be Preston, so you could do that on your own time. Maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but until we see you again, have a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, if you're watching this later, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.